Today I want to tell you about one of my most cherished possessions, one of my most highly requested videos, and one of my favorite pieces of vintage tech that isn't a camera or some weird old sound system. It's a film scanner called the Fuji Frontier SP3000. It's from the early 2000s and it's one of the most amazing film scanners I have ever had the pleasure of using. I got this Fuji Frontier at the beginning of 2021 during the pandemic when I was running a film lab, which was actually called Linus in his film lab. I started it out in my closet in my apartment in Raleigh, North Carolina, and the lab got big enough that I decided to move into a small storefront in downtown Raleigh. One of the most complicated things about running a mail-in film lab by yourself is just getting bogged down in different parts of the process. So buying a film processor like the Noritsu V30. I see frames. Yes, dude, oh my gosh. Oh my God, dude. And a film scanner like the Fuji Frontier SP3000 really can help you speed up those processes. My film lab might not be around anymore, but one of the few things that I still have from it is this scanner. And I wanna show you why it's one of the best scanners I have ever had the pleasure of using, what makes it so great, and what makes it such an iconic device in film photography history. This scanner is fully capable of scanning not only 35 millimeter film, but also 120 film in color, slide, or black and white. 35 millimeter film is an absolute pleasure to scan on this device. You just feed it into the auto carrier, it takes it, does a preview scan very quickly of every single frame, and then it rewinds it back to the first frame so that you can edit each frame on the roll, and then it scans each frame as you edit them in high res. Got the diffusion box right there, that's the 120 diffusion box in the original packaging. And this is the behemoth itself, the Fujifilm automatic carrier for 135 or 35 millimeter film. This right here is a 35 millimeter diffusion box. If I were to drop this right now, it would be very unfortunate and very expensive. Boom. This is an absolutely horrible photo of me. I'm doing a dumb face, but it's a perfect example of how much overexposure you can have in an image that, like a flash photo, that you can just fix on a frontier. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the density. I'm just gonna bring it down, bring the brightness down. And then now that the exposure is fixed, you know, my skin, you can actually see like the redness in my cheeks and stuff. I'm gonna bring some magenta in to fix the green tint. And then boom, it's, it's pretty much color balance. I mean, that looks pretty good. It's a horrible photo of me again, but like before it was just an overexposed mess like that. So, amazing. Okay, this is my favorite one of the roll. So this photo was actually a little underexposed. I mean, that looks beautiful. I'll add a bit, a bit of pink magenta in, and maybe a little bit war of warmth and a little bit more magenta, and then that's looking pretty stellar, honestly. This film was shot on this little Kodak Cameo. A little $10 point and shoot. And I've already scanned this film before, but it came back very sharp. At least a couple of the photos came back too sharp for the fact that it's a little plastic lens. And obviously this was underexposed as well, but if I bring the brightness up, you'll get like a nice fade to the image, which is something that you see from a lot of, you know, lab scans, especially if it's underexposed. But I can kind of like mess around and fix the colors a bit to get some of that greenish fade to go away. So it's, even though it's a little underexposed, you still have kind of a color correct photo. This is super blue. Super underexposed, but with a little color adjustment, it starts to look pretty sweet. I mean, you, you have that like color detail back in the clouds and stuff. It's just not blue anymore. I'll scan this once the way I've corrected it and also once the way it was just interpreted by the scanner off the bat. Up on screen, I'm going to show a couple different ways that you could scan just one single frame on this scanner using all of the different controls. You can take any negative view scan in any direction you want. If you want your image super cold for some reason, you can make it cold. If you want it to have a crazy green tint, you can do that. Magenta tint, that too. Really warm, that as well. Super bright and overexposed, yes. Super underexposed, sure, I mean, if you want to. 
Actually, an example of this is this photo I scanned of my friend Rocky recently. This is the scan at the neutral density, which is just what it was shot at. I decided to drop the density and exposure really low so that it came out really dark and just showed her silhouette. And that really, I think that's a great example of just how much range you have from within the scanner and how much potential work and in-scanner editing your lab tech could be doing for every single frame of your work, which is uh, kind of mind-blowing to think about. 120 film is a completely separate carrier that you put in and it is a completely manual process, which means you have to slide each frame through and press enter or start to begin scanning that individual frame. Luckily, 120 film has a lot less shots than 35, so it does not take nearly as long as maybe you would assume a manual process to take. I've gotten to the point where I can scan a roll of 120 film in maybe six or seven minutes. So right now I am set up for scanning medium format film. So I took out the calibration mask and I'm putting in a six by seven mask here so that I can scan some six by seven. I think I'm gonna start with some 800T that I shot in the studio. Just to give you guys a little look at how beautiful some of these six by seven images can be on this scanner. Close it down, slide it in. And it'll come right up on screen. You can see right here, this is what the image preview looks like. It's in black and white, even though it's color. And that clicking you just heard is the carrier magnetizing and holding the negative down super flat. So this is what it looks like. You can see I can make a ton of adjustments, both like darker and brighter. Honestly, it gets tungsten balanced film correct usually right off the bat if you're in the studio. It's pretty amazing. Okay, I shot these in Seattle of my friend Mome, and you can really get an idea of how differently sometimes these negatives start out on a scanner like this. So this is 400D on the scanner right now, and as you see when it comes in, it's like super green. It's not how it should look. So I have to pump in a ton of blue, and then boom, Immediately, once you do negative 14 yellow, which is adding a ton of blue, you have like almost this perfectly color balanced photo for like what you'd expect 400D to look like. I usually add a little bit of magenta and I like to personally keep the tones on shadow hard like that. And it just looks, it looks so pretty. And then after you hit enter, your film is now being scanned <laughs> and it's done. I shot these in January up in the middle of the mountains, like the foggy mountains right outside of LA. Here, this is just Portra 400, which honestly usually looks just pretty good off the bat on the frontier, um, even though it's a Fuji system. It seems to know that Portra is one of the kingpins of the game. And I think I'll do this one. This is one of those photos that I shot and I was just like, when I scanned it for the first time, I was just absolutely geeking. That's like super blue and colorful and there's this red light that I pinned right on her face and so I can drop the brightness down super dark and dramatic like that. And I can add a little bit of red to accentuate that red light that I had on her face, add a tad of magenta and then you have a gorgeous frontier scan that just looks straight out of, I don't know, like a Tim Burton movie or something. What's really cool is with tone adjust, you can do shadow hard, which is, you know, you have these deep shadows, but you could do shadow soft and watch how the shadows change. Now you can see all of the shrubbery below her and everything. It's pretty crazy. And actually I use the six by seven mask and I slide 35 millimeter film in there to get a full border scan to create contact sheets with and stuff. It's actually somewhat high res and it looks pretty good. And I think I might be one of the only people using this method on a frontier because it is very tedious and just takes so long, but it does look really, really nice. Honestly, in my opinion, this scanner does color so right. When you make your color adjustments with the keypad, you are directly influencing what light is beamed through the negative when it's capturing the scan, which is a very similar process to darkroom printing, and I think that's why the Frontier's colors are so good. The other part of that being, I'm sure a team of five to 10,000 people designed this thing in the early 2000s and created one of the best, most light tight film scanners they could. I wanna take a moment to show a collection of my favorite photos I've shot and then scanned with the Frontier. 35 millimeter, 120 film, in color and black and white. Enjoy.
That was a look at my favorite film scanner of all time, the Fuji Frontier SP3000. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you really did, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below. I try to respond to almost every comment that I get these days. I'll see y'all soon, and hopefully in the next video I'm out shooting some cool photos because that's what I really, really love doing. Um, I'm out of here. <laughs>